When you talk about improving uh, the body with cancer or as a preventative, do we know what role diet and nutrition play in that whole picture? So diet and nutrition are often the go-to therapies for mm -hmm. people who are interested in prevention. It makes sense because we eat a lot and you know we do it uh, often. Mm -hmm. So it's something we feel like, well, if we change that, then it must change my risks significantly. And it's true that diet is very important. I, th you know, If you look at the body of literature, if you were to somehow figure out the perfect diet for you, you would probably lower your risk by about 30%. So that's significant, and that's something we don't want to ignore. But that's not zero. So diet, in my opinion, does not cure cancer or eliminate the risk of cancer. And that's why people who have eaten really well still can get sure. cancer. Um, but, but yes, diet is important. And there are lots of diets out there and mm -hmm. lots of different, you know, um, I don't know, diet of the year, I guess, is kind of what seems to be happening. Yeah. But again, if you look at the body of literature and you look for the common denominator across all those diet approaches, what you see is a plant-based whole foods or unprocessed diet. So at the very basic level, that's the most important dietary strategy to incorporate. And then beyond that, it really becomes kind of individualized to your own biochemical and metabolic risk factors. Mm -hmm. um, so yes, diet is important. Uh, you mentioned diet could maybe help you 30%. So there's obviously other factors. And a, a chapter in the book that you have, The Definitive Guide to Cancer, you talk about stress as well. And I know you've touched on it, uh, emotional health a little bit. How big of a factor is that? It's probably something that most people wouldn't consider. Right. You know, and we don't, so that it's harder to get data on stress mm -hmm. because there's so many, what we call in research, confounding variables when we try to create this association. So it's, I can't give you the same statistic that I just did with diet, but um, it does seem that stress um, probably does have some influence on the initial development of cancer, but much more clearly in the literature, what we see is that stress increases the risk of recurrence and increases the risk of progression, ultimately death from cancer. So once you're diagnosed, stress becomes very important to address. Then we can actually explain this on sort of a, from a scientific level, we now understand that when people are under chronic emotional stress, their whole biochemistry changes. And under the influence of these stress hormones, we actually can create a milieu or that environment around cancer cells that, that feed the cancer cells, that literally stimulate it to grow faster and more. And that's all a direct result of these stress hormones that are produced. So it becomes very important then to um, do as much as we can to eliminate the stressors in our life, but also probably more easily done is to change how we perceive and react to those stressors so that we can change the biochemical environment of stress in our body as a way to make that environment less hospitable to cancer growth.